Hey guys, we're in Newport Beach checking out the turn quick haul. This is the P9 Performance. It's a nine speed with a performance line sport motor. It's actually the first time I've tried this class three, just compact cargo bike, 32.99 USD. Now it only comes in one frame size, but they've got a couple of different colors. There's this gloss gray, they have a gloss dark purple. And even though it's one size, it's a very easy to approach frame, kind of a mid-step, uh, lower standover height here. And we've got this adjustable speed lifter stem that goes up and down and a 31.6 millimeter seat post that can go higher or lower. So there's actually a lot of fit potential with this from really petite riders to larger riders. The other thing that's cool about this is it can be stood vertically and you could bring it into an elevator or store it in your closet at home more easily. So it's designed to be a space saver and that's sort of the, the deal with these turn bikes. Now turn also has a quick haul D8, so derailleur eight is what that stands for. Both models do have a derailleur, but this is a nine speed. The D8 is an eight speed and it has a Bosch active line motor. It only gives you 50 Newton meters of torque versus 65 on this one. And this one again is class three, a little bit faster, a little bit sportier. Now in both cases, you've got a rigid steel fork. There's no suspension. And with those smaller 20 inch wheels, you have a higher attack angle. So you feel the cracks and you feel the bumps a lot more. Turn has done a, a great job choosing the tires. These Schwabi Big Apple, they've got K-Guard three puncture protection, reflective sidewall stripes, and they're higher volume, 20 by 2.15. So a little bit wider, it's gonna give you some stability, some float, and then just some, some comfort. The higher pressure is gonna be more efficient, a little bit quieter, but it's just, it's gonna feel more jarring. Standard hub spacing on this, 100 millimeters up front with a quick release, it's like a nine millimeter axle. And then in the back, 135 millimeters with a quick release as well. So puncture resistant tires, but if you do need to service these, it's a little bit easier. And also up on this front fork, they've got provisions for a cafe lock. So it puts a rod through the spokes. Back to the seat post, 31.6 millimeters. You could replace this with a suspension post if you wanted to, and I probably would. It'd give me a little bit more comfort. It's a fairly upright ride for most people because the reach isn't super far. Um, but that said, it's gonna raise the minimum saddle height by a few inches. Most of the time though, you know, you step on the pedal and boost yourself up into the saddle. It's easy to say that, but when you load this bike up and there are so many racks and everything, it, there's, there's just more weight that you're dealing with. So coming back to the smaller wheels and that low standover height, it's easier to load a bike that is closer to the ground. And that center of gravity is low. We got the motor right there. It's like 6.4 pounds. And then the battery pack here too, very low, very close to the center of the bike. And it's pretty well protected in the frame. If we come over here, this is the turn GSD get stuff done. It has a suspension fork up here. It has double batteries. It's a lot heavier. And it's just like a burlier bike with kind of all the fixings. This bike over here, we just weighed it. 52 and a half pounds. Okay, so not too bad considering that it has these awesome fenders. These actually have like a layer of aluminum and, and also plastic. So it's sort of a blended material that's a little bit tougher and maybe quieter than plastic because sometimes you hear the rattling and stuff. So I, re I really like that turn did that. We got a little mud flap at the front so it should keep your shoes and shins fairly clean and dry, about 65 millimeter width. And again, that complements those slightly wider tires. You know, you look at the chain cover too, it's similar material and it's gonna keep your pant leg from touching or maybe you're wearing a drag or a skirt or something. This is a 52 tooth steel chain ring. It's not narrow wide or anything. It's just a regular chain ring and it's got a plastic guard on the outside. That's probably going to keep you uh, kind of from dropping the chain and it just feels like everything is really tight. I like that they have a riser here, this little pulley wheel that gives you a bit more clearance because this is a, you know, it's, it's fairly long considering how small the wheels are. So you don't have like a, maybe a hang up and get high centered on this thing. I was, it was interesting to see these crank arms here. These are standard 170 millimeter crank arms. So you have a full cadence, and just kind of that, that comfortable leg extension when you're riding it. It feels like a traditional bike, but they do get a little bit closer to the ground. So I could see having pedal strikes and stuff. Just be aware of that if you're taking a, a corner uh, at speed, especially, or you're going a little bit off road and there's rocks and tree trunks or something blocking the way. Welgo aluminum alloy platform pedals with a little bit of plastic and then this rubberized tread, pretty decent for what we're 
seeing on some of the other bikes end up with like a fully plastic pedal or like a folding pedal, they, they aren't as sturdy. So I'm really glad that Turn chose those. And then we have the nine speed cassette in the rear. This is 11 to 34 tooth. It's a pretty wide spread. And then Shimano Alivio. So it's, you know, it's not the worst derailleur. It's kind of a step up long cage so sometimes i look at these and i'm like it's pretty close to the ground you know if you get too close to a curb or something you don't want that to make contact but it is a nicer part from shimano which should be more reliable a little bit lighter weight if we look at the shifter mechanism up here this is also shimano alivio it has that optical gear window so you know what gear you've chosen but unlike the dior level component you can't push the high lever with your thumb you can only pull it with your pointer finger to me that's a bummer because a lot of times I like to have my fingers up here with those brakes and then use my thumb to shift, but I'm always, you know, kind of safety oriented with the brakes. And this one you can't, you have to take that finger off and pull it. But we do have multi shift, so one, two, three, you can dump the gears. The Bosch drive system is really good. It's measuring your rear wheel speed, pedal cadence, and pedal torque over a thousand times per second, and it has shift detection. So in addition to you as a rider easing off a little bit so that those gears shift smoothly, the motor's smart enough to, to ease back, and that's gonna protect the drivetrain a little bit longer. Nice, kind of a low-rise, mid-rise handlebar with locking ergonomic grips. We've got the hydraulic Shimano brake levers two or maybe three fingers and they are adjustable reach we have a set screw there so you can bring them in a little bit if you're one of those petite riders and you you also have a smaller hand i love that 160 millimeter rotors front and rear which is yeah it's kind of the starting point i think that's fine you get a mechanical advantage with a smaller wheel but considering that this thing can really be loaded up with a lot of weight um I'm really glad they went with hydraulic and didn't didn't go with like mechanical, especially with that rear brake because the line has to run farther. And you know, a lot of times people are right-handed and you're squeezing that and it's just, it's nice to have it action really quickly and securely. Great kickstand here, it's adjustable. It doesn't create any pedal lock or anything at the rear. And I think there's another mounting point here for additional stands. If you wanted something heavy duty, kind of like a center stand that we see over there, turn just, they kind of go nuts with, with all the accessories. I want to point out that we have bottle cage bosses here and then multiple mounting points. There's even like a little compartment here for bringing tools or accessories. And on the back, you could have a child seat. There's sort of like a toddler seat. There's an enclosed rain cover that I've seen. They have panniers for the sides. It's just, yeah, it's just amazing. That's really what they're known for. And it's high quality stuff. You can buy these bikes from a wide network of dealers all over. So this is Mark from Victory E-Bikes right here in Newport. Hey there, and it's just such a coincidence. We happen to end up in front of Newport Beach Elementary School with the school bus yellow yes. GSD. That's is exactly this right. one yeah. of your more popular bikes? Very popular bike. And even intentionally this color because it is so vibrant you know we want to keep the kids safe and still be able to kind of ride the bikes to, to school so yeah school bus yellow is very visible it's uh you know we we have a lot of customers that line up and drop their kids off and they don't have to <laughs> sit and idle in their car for 15 minutes yeah that makes a lot of sense what's been popular accessory for for these bikes then? so the actually the 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 rain cover um, they have a very nice system where you know your child is basically not exposed to the elements and yeah that's a very popular thing and then just the the larger bags you know where you can go grocery shopping mm. i mean turn is so thoughtful when it comes to just racking out the whole bike i want to say car because it's kind of <laughs> yeah. an suv they have um, like a bag that's on the front that clips they on they have a basket they that do. mounts they, to the head tube so you they, yep you giant know? rack they got a basket they've got all kinds of things so up front, I want to call out this Herman's headlight. It points where you steer. It's got side windows for safety. And in the back, we have a Herman's rear light with two LEDs and it's really tucked in. A lot of times with cargo bikes or e-bikes in general, you park it at a bike rack or you know, maybe at home, these plastic bits can get bumped off and kind of broken over time. So this feels super well protected, yet it's still visible from the sides. And with such a long rack, you can be intentional about where you place the bags so they don't block the light, as well as those reflective sidewall stripes. The Bosch warranty is two years on their equipment, but Turn offers a 10 year warranty on their fork and their frame, which is kind of nice. A lot of these parts wear over time, but that's why you work with a shop. They can, you know, get some new brake pads and stuff. 
I wanted to get Mark to take that power pack 400 off and just show there's like a key port over there. It comes off very easily, five and a half pounds for that thing. And it's got like a little LED charge level indicator on the side. So, you know, you can tell how full it is once it's mounted and the bike is on. But a lot of times I'll see people storing these in like a laundry room or somewhere. You wanna avoid extreme heat and extreme cold. The heat will degrade the cells. You won't get as many full charge cycles. The cold will temporarily stunt your range. And yeah, so those are the, the considerations. This is the charger that comes back. It's the compact charger, only two amps, which isn't as fast as the standard four amp charger. But then again, you know, this is a this is sort of the lower capacity battery from Bosch. And if you wanted to, maybe you're someone who already has another Bosch e-bike, this is cross compatible with the Power Pack 500. And you could always upgrade to that. They're small enough, they're, I really like these. It's kind of rounded. You could put that in your backpack. You could put it in one of the, the side bags or something. Lots of options for extending the range. Much like that bike, you just have to carry the extra battery in, in some of your cargo space. I want to complain for a minute here. Do you have the key for that, Mark? Yep. Oh, there it is. So in the past, I've seen turn, I think they've used the Abus key set. And in this case, they're using Trelloc. Abus has some really good folding locks and some other accessories. And you can get the key to like, so the key would be used for multiple accessories. I don't think you can do that with Trelloc. What we do is we just swap it out with the Abus unit and then you get a full Abus system. So, so it's all possible. It is, absolutely. But possible. you'd have to pay a little extra. So we got a flick bell up here and we got the display. This is the Purion. It's sort of a entry point display from Bosch. We got a power button on top, plus, minus, and walk mode. There's also a micro USB port over here, but it's only for diagnostics, unfortunately. I'm always like, bah, you know, I wish it would charge my phone, but there are no smartphone apps for this kind of older generation of displays. Grayscale screen. Let's go ahead and power it on. Press the power button for a second. We've got speed at the top. It showed our assist level for a moment. It said off, so there's no assist. And then we've got maybe our odometer over here or trip meter. And then we've got lights. To activate and deactivate the lights, you just hold the plus button for a few seconds. And then charge level indicator. So that, it's very much like the battery. Remember there were the little LEDs? There's only five of these little blocks. So each block represents a 20% step. It's not quite as precise as a full battery percentage or maybe 10 bars. So that's a little bit of a complaint, but thankfully there's a range estimator that is much more precise. If we hold the minus button, we can cycle through, see range. See, it says no, no range right now because it's human powered. But if we click up to eco, now it says nine miles. And by the way, we're, we're pretty low on this battery. If we go all the way up to turbo, three miles. Okay, and that calculates dynamically based on your last mile of riding and kind of your weight, the tire pressure would have an impact, the charge level of the battery, all that stuff. So it's nice to have such a smart bike that can you know, estimate the range like that. We'll hold minus again for a second. We got just assist level all the time, so we know what it is. Some people like to have that up. And if we go to the next display, we have trip. And notice this, if I, if I raise or lower assist level, we temporarily see that, and then it goes back to whichever menu you selected. Okay, another cool um, trick here is, see how it says miles per hour at the top? If I hold minus and then tap power, we can go to kilometers per hour. So that's a fun little one that I like. And then there's walk mode. So we uh, press walk and then hold plus, and the, the motor would actually power it forward slowly. And that could be really useful if, if this thing is loaded up and you're on kind of technical terrain, or maybe you're just in a crowded area where riding isn't appropriate, but you still, I mean, 52 pounds, that's completely like unloaded right here. So nice that the Bosch system has that. I think with that said, we can pop on and take for a little ride. Yeah, I'm just gonna hop on this thing. That's that super easy to approach and stabilize. Start off. Nice. Takes off. Yeah, there you go. Nice job, Mark. <laughs> oh, brakes! Oh, good. Very nice, very nice brakes. Oh, boy. Oh. We gotta have fun with this one. This one has the sport motor. That's pretty cool. Do you wanna hop on, too? Give it a, give it a go? Let's do it. Can you ride a wheelie on this thing? <laughs> I don't wanna tempt you. I love the lights. I mean, they're looking really... <laughs> you need to be in turbo. Oh, we dropped the handlebar. It's, it's speed approved, it's not wheelie approved. It's not wheelie approved. 
Yeah. Like, come right at me. Look at that light. I'm, I'm really impressed. That's pretty nice. I think I said like 120 lumens. Yeah. <laughs> and I like your Avis helmet here. You got the light on the back. Best protection, Avis. Very nice. Avis gave me this helmet. By the way, this is a completely free review. Uh, they're helping pay for a hotel for a night and you know, Mark and I are buds. So it's just cool to get to check out these bikes back to back. Do you try these out with your daughters and stuff? Do you ever go riding? Oh, absolutely, yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I could see you guys going out, riding together, just kind of doing a walk around on this. And that larger chainring, the 52 teeth, that sort of slows your cadence a little bit and it helps to offset the smaller wheels. It's gonna help you hit and maintain those higher speeds comfortably. So this, right. this is set up to be a class three bike. Of course it's purpose built. I think that's about it. I've had a lot of fun with Mark. Thank you to Victory E-Bikes. My goal is just to be objective, have some fun, and help you find the right bike for your lifestyle and your budget. So I'm really impressed with this one. I had a great time. Thanks again, Mark. Likewise. Yeah. Thank you, Court. Ride safe. Love you. See you next time.